Assalamu alaikum. Today, inshallah, we'll complete with chapter 24, lesson 1, reproduction and flowering plant. Let's start with the structure of the flowers. As you know, the endosperms flower composed of four parts, sepals, petals, stamen, and corpels. Stamen, which is the male part, corpels, a female part. The male part is composed from filament and anther, where we can find the sperms, which are the... Um, uh, gametes for the male part and the uh, carpels we have ovary and stigma where the um, the um, male gametes will start or enter and to reach the ovary where we can find the ov uh, ovules or the eggs which are the female part okay sepals and petals the outermost circle of flower parts contain the sepals so the sepals they are the green part the outer and the petals they are the colorful one okay which are brightly colored found just inside the sepals we have many colors for the sepals sorry for the petals and these colors and numbers and even the shape uh, attract insects and other pollination or pollinators to the flowers okay for the stamens are the male part of the flower, okay? Each stamen causes the stalk called filament with an anther at its tip where we can find the gametophytes, the male gametophyte or the pollen grain on the anther. On the corbel, the innermost floral part of the corbel, which will produce and shelter the female gametophytes and later seeds, each corpel has a broad base forming an ovary which contains one or more ovules where female gametophytes are produced. The diameter of the corpel narrows into a soap, a stake called the style, and the top of the style is a sticky or feathery portion known as stigma, which is specialized to capture pollen, which is the male part. Um, sometimes called single corbel or several fused corbel as a pistil. So the corbel, one corbel or a few or several fused corbels called pistil. The angiosperm life cycle. The angiosperm have a life cycle that shows an alternation of generation between diploid sporophytes phase and haploid gametophyte stage. Again, alternation of generation that we can find it in the angiosperms is a uh, uh, alternation between diploid sporophyte, sporophyte phase and haploid gametophyte stage. Male and female gametophyte live within the tissues of the sporophyte, as you can see here in this cycle. Let's start with the development of male gametophyte. The male gametophyte, which is the bowling grain, develop inside anther. So let's check the uh, cycle. Meiosis produce four haploid spore cells. Okay. Again, we have um, uh, two ant cells. Then through meiosis, it will um, um, produce four haploid spore cells. These spore cells will then enter mitosis. Okay. Uh, to produce the two haploid nuclei of single pollen grain. So these four cells, four cells that produced four haploid cells will produce another four cells, okay? Four haploid cells. The two nuclei are surrounded by a thick wall that protect the male gametophyte. While, let's check the female gametophyte development. The female gametophyte develop inside each carpel of the flower, of a flower, and the ovules which is, will be the future seed, are enveloped in a protective ovary, the fruit, uh, fruit or the future fruit. Single diploid cells go through meiosis to produce four haploid cells. We will then, uh, or the cell will integrate the three of them, and there is still one haploid cell. This haploid cell will um, undergoes mitosis, producing eight nuclei. This is the embryo, okay? These eight nuclei and the surrounding membranes are called the embryo sac. The embryo sac contains within a, the ovule, makes up the female gametophyte of a flowering plant, as you can see at the right part. 
Symbols form around six of the eight nuclei. One of the eight nuclei near the base of the gametophyte is the nucleus of the egg, the female gametes. Um, in fertil if fertilization takes place, the e this egg cell will fuse with the male gamete to become a zygote that grows into a new sporophyte plant. Look at the pollination part. The pollination part, it's happened even by wind or even by insects. Okay, the insects will just attach to the anther or stand on the anther and then we'll move to another flower and the pollination will happen. Okay, so the pollination is the transfer of the pollen to the female portion of the flower. Some angiosperms are when pollinated by, by the other or the most are pollinated by animal because one pollination is when pollination is less effective or efficient than animal pollination wind pollination plants such um, as oak trees rely on favorable weather and sheer number of pollen uh, grains to get pollen from one plant to another Animal pollinated plants have a variety of adaptation, adaptations such as bright colors and sweet nectar to attract and reward animals. Animals have evolved body shapes that enable them to reach nectar deep within certain flowers. Insect pollination is beneficial to insects and other animals because it provides dependent, dependable um, source of food, pollen, and nectar. Plants benefits because the insects take the pollen directly from flower to flower and that will make the pollination happen. Let's check the um, fertilization. You have to memorize that we have haploid cells, which is one set of chromosomes, and diploid cells, which is a double set of chromosomes or two sets of chromosomes. If a pollen grain lands on the stigma of the flower of the same species, it begins to grow a pollen tube of the pollen grains two cells or one cell the generative um, cell divides and form two sperm cells the other cell become the pollen two so the first part once the pollen will um, uh, undergoes a division cell division mitotic cell division to form two cells one of them will be the pollen tube and the other which is the pollen the pollen tube contains a tube nucleus and two sperm cells. The pollen tube grows into the stale where it eventually reaches the ovary and enters the ovule. Then inside the embryo sac, two distinct fertilization take place, a process called double fertilization. First, one of the sperm's nuclei fuses with the egg nucleus to produce diploid zygote, which will grow into new plants embryo. The second once the other sperm's nucleus fuses with two molar nuclei in the imperial sac to form a triploid cells or triploid cells, 3M, and this a cell will grow into a food rich tissue known as endosperm, which nourishes the seeds or seedling as it grows. Um, by using the endosperm to store food, the flowering plant spends very little in the way of food resources of producing seeds from ovules until double fertilization has actually take, taken place. The resources saved can be used to make many more seeds. So as you can see, we have the embryo at the left, lower left, and we have the endosperms and seed coat at the other part. Let's check the other types of reproductions. We have the vegetative reproduction. The vegetative reproduction, which is um, a reproduction or asexual reproduction that will happen in the plants, when, uh, when especially the flowering plant, okay? The vegetative reproduction enables a single plant to produce offspring genetically identical to itself by mitosis. It doesn't require gametes, flowers, or even fertilization, just you have to take part of the plant to make it a new plant. This process takes place naturally in many plants. Part. Um, let's check the types of vegetative reproductions. We have new plants may grow from roots, leaves, stems, or pl pl plateaus. A potato, like an example, is an underground stem that can grow whole new plant from butt called eyes. 
because vegetative reproduction doesn't involve pollination or seed formation, a single plant can reproduce quickly. Asexual reproductions allow a single plant to reproduce genetically identical offspring, enabling well-adapted individuals to rapidly fill a favorable environment. One drawback of sexual reproduction is that it doesn't produce a new combination of genetic traits, which may be valuable if conditions in the physical environment change. We have another part or another example, which is plant propagation. To propagate plant with desirable characteristics, um, we can use cutting or grafting to make many identical copies of plant or to produce offsprings from seedless plants. Okay, and we have also one of the simplest way to reproduce plant vegetatively is by cutting. We can cut part of the plant and this cut for, cutted part will be put in the water and then it will grow again to fully uh, plant. Grafting is a method of propagation used to reproduce seedless plants and varieties of woody plants that cannot be propagated from cutting. They can use it many times to get desirable traits and that's all about the plant. Thank you all and have a nice day.